outfits. There's um, there's a lot of demonic that has infiltrated our churches. There's a lot of pastors that have fallen to the wild ways and wicked. Um, haftiness, the love of money has infiltrated churches. When you don't work together in the fivefold ministry, you're 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 um, robbing yourself of that gift of the other giftings that those have to work together. So in these latter days, what you often find is the Lord erasing up prophets. Prophets. Prophets are not often welcomed in a lot of. We're welcomed welcomed in charismatic Book of Acts churches, that that specialize in fivefold ministry and deliverance because that's what the church is all about. But there aren't a whole lot of charismatic Book of Acts churches out there. Glory to God, Hallelujah! They are growing, but unfortunately, they are not growing in mass production within the four walls as rapidly as the Lord would like them. So what the Lord has done is He is. He is raising up prophets and he is launching us as prophets to start our own communities and our own churches to be able to teach in the way and be that vessel that the Lord wants to communicate to his flock about. But these people are not getting it through the four walls of the churches. So guess what? When the Lord is not happy about what's going on in the organized churches, he will deal, and he has appointed prophets to be the vessels, and many of us are being called to launch our own ministries through the coordination of Jesus Christ as he is the founder to bring the truth about his word. Because unfortunately, my friends, I'm sorry, many of you are being robbed in the four walls of churches. Um, how do you reconcile that? Um, I still go to regular church. Um, there's very good teachings to be taught there. What I did when I was going in Christ is I very much did attend the, the, the Sunday service and I was very cognizant about the teachings. There's wonderful things and wonderful events and, and ways that the church the church can help you. But I did when I was growing in my Christ. I had a personal one-on-one -on -one mentor. And I also was also teaching myself with online teachings about with prophets who were, gift, who were gifted like I was. Because I knew that when I was going to the organized church on the weekends, I was only getting a glimpse of to, into the calling that the Lord wanted to launch me into. So I had to supplement my my learning experience with a mentor and I also had to supplement supplement my experience where when the Holy Spirit would lead me to watch other prophets videos and that is a lot of how I learned to go into my calling by listening to a lot of these other online communities the Lord was very careful the Lord guided me the Lord kept me very protected in that wall of fire and only led me to the right prophets only led me to the ones that were true in their calling I was not instructed by any um, I was not led to any online community Communities that were of false prophets the Holy Spirit was very gracious and very generous and very loving to guide me to the online communities that were going to help me grow into my calling to supplement the things that I was learning in the organized church and then together the Lord launched me into my calling with the teachings I got in regular church things that I got with my mentorship and things that I got by the online communities of specific prophets pouring into those who were also being brought up as prophets because I wasn't going to get taught how to be a prophet <coughs> going to my going to going to my church on Sundays but there was other very relevant things that that I was going to learn in church so I had to kind of pull all three together um amen so I encourage you if you go to church um if the Holy Spirit leads you and prod you to stay there stay there but I very much welcome you to to subscribe to this channel and also subscribe and pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you to lead you to other other mentors and other um teachers and other prophets that can help you guide in your calling because it's so imperative. It is so imperative to supplement that. Um. <clears throat> the reason of a five-fold ministry, folks, is to equip. His intention of the five-fold ministry is to equip the perfecting of saints. Um, that they should work in ministering and building up the body of Christ. So the five-fold ministry is to work together. Um that it may develop until we attain oneness in faith and in the comprehension and accurate knowledge of the Son of God and mature in Christ. <clears throat> very imperative. Very, very imperative. Um, so again, I just wanted to let you know that you probably will not hear about some of these teachings or um, 
it's not going to be like what you're used to if you're new to Christ or you grew up in another domination. Don't be surprised if a lot of it is very shocking to you. It may be the first time that you are hearing it. I just want to assure you, though, that I am led by the Holy Spirit. I am a bona fide prophetess. I am a licensed minister of the gospel. I only speak truth. And I'm sorry if some of you are going to come and tune in for the first time. And it may contradict some of the things that you were taught in the church. But the Lord is dealing with the actual organized church. Which brings me to my next thing. Um, the church. <laughs> when we talk about the church, friends, we are not actually talking about the four walls of a church. A uh, key term when, when you hear me preaching um, and ministering, the church doesn't necessarily talk about the four walls. Although it can be. It can be. Sometimes it will be used to refer to that. But the church often refer, refers to the followers of Christ. So if you ever hear me talking about uh, the church... Most of the time, I won't be talking about a place that has actual four walls. Sometimes I will, but most of the time I'm actually referring to the body of Christ, which are the followers and the believers. Um, you'll often hear me talk about a uh, religion and talk about a spirit of religion. And I know that may confuse some of you because be like, she's talking about a spirit of religion and she's making it sound bad. I thought that religion was good. I thought I was following Jesus Christ. I thought that this was very much a religion. No, that's not so. I'm sorry, I have to explain the spirit of religion. Uh, the Lord is not about religion. Religion, uh, my friends, is a facet of ideologies and beliefs. Okay? And the and when Jesus roamed the earth and walked and was ministering in his gifts, there were Sadducees and there were Pharisees. Those were religious. They had a set of rules. They had a set of doctrine. Um, and you had to live according to that. And it was like the law. Um, Jesus Christ came to abolish the law, my friends, and gave us salvation through the blood of the Lamb. Jesus is the Lion and the Lamb. Amen. So when I refer to a religious spirit, it's referring to it's referring to and it, the religious spirit is actually not of God. A religious spirit is demonic. It's a religious spirit condemns. Have you ever heard like extreme Christians who like will pick at certain things or will bully people that they believe are wrong? Or just have to push their beliefs. And, and I get that. I'm a prophetess. Trust me. I will stand up for what's right. And I will stand up for what's on the kingdom agenda. I will. I will not back down. But I'm here to assure you that there's a definitive difference between not backing down and being that vessel and a religious spirit. A religious spirit is kind of like a fanatical. Um, very synonymous with the Pharisees and the Sadducees of the old day that didn't believe in Jesus. They thought Jesus was a mystic. And Jesus was a mystic. He was a mystic. Yes, he was a mystic. He was gifted in the supernatural. And we are called to be vessels and we are also equipped in the supernatural. He does give us the authority to do that. And you can find that scripture in the book of Acts because he pours out his spirit. When he rose and ascended into heavens and the Pentecost happened, he gave us the authority to access his gifts. Amen. But a religious spirit is not of God. The religious spirit chastises. The religious spirit says, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. The religious spirit says, that's wrong. I'm right. The religious spirit says, don't wear this, wear that. The religious spirit also says, women can be ministers. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So that's an example of what the religious spirit says. Um, how is that different? How is that different from what, what we are teaching? Um, we don't embody a religious spirit. There are definite, definitive things in the body of Christ that are absolutely wrong. And I do not, um, I do not endorse those things, nor do I choose to live by things that are not holy. I choose to live a holy life. I encourage each and every one of you to live a holy life. But that doesn't mean that, that, uh, that doesn't, that's very different from um, being cognizant and trying to live holy is very different from embodying a religious spirit. A religious spirit isn't healthy. It's actually demonic. It actually causes condemnation instead of conviction. Mm -hmm. Condemnation isn't from the Lord. That's from the enemy. The Lord will convict you. It'll be, when you turn to Christ, it'll be very convicting. You'll pull the true sorry, but it's very quick to allow you to repent and get on the right path. The enemy is the one through a religious spirit that will cause condemnation and cause you to linger in the desert over what you did that's bad. The Lord wants to just give you that quick, contrite revelation to do that U-turn and get you back on the right path. He's not trying to trying to defile you and keep you in the wilderness. That's not Jesus. Mm -mm. So our ministry focuses on the personal relationship with Jesus Christ and not religious facets. Again, that doesn't mean that I condone sin. It doesn't mean I condone an unholy life. No, but I'm here to tell you if you hear me ever reference a religious spirit and be like, why is she giving that a negative connotation? I thought religion was good. No, 
Uh, your walk with Jesus, my friends, if you're new to believing in Christ, should be about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You should focus more on your relationship with Christ, and your relationship with Christ should be the catalyst which leads you to live the holy life. Amen? Your relationship with Christ should be built. That should be built into a solid foundation. It should be that relationship, amen, that drives you, that shows you, that directs you. Your relationship, your mutual love for one another, Jesus' love for you, and the love that's planted in you to be a follower of Christ should be the one that is leading you into holiness. It should be that drive. The, the relationship with Christ should be the catalyst for your desire to want to live holy. That is very different from a religious spirit that says, I got to do this, 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 and this, and I got to work my way into heaven. No, no. Yes, faith, with, faith without works is dead, but that's another element when, you're, when you've grown in Christ and you're trying to ascertain the perfect will. But when you're just talking about salvation for a baby believer and stuff no the enemy will condemn you and try to tell you that you're not worthy and tell you you have to work your way into heaven no okay very different from my previous teaching about faith without works yes works is important but that's something when you're that's something when you're trying to ascertain uh the perfect will of god and you've grown in christ but when it comes to very basic things no let your relationship with Christ guide you in your journey into holiness. It's not about religious facets or ideology. So if you hear me reference religious spirits and give it a negative connotation, it's because a religious spirit, <coughs> excuse me, is demonic. It's there to condemn and destroy and tear down and bully. And that's not Jesus. That is not Jesus. You should live a holy life not because you feel like you're pressured or under condemnation through a religious spirit. You should be so in tune with the Holy Spirit and so in tune with your relationship with Jesus and the fact that he loves you and that you love him back. That that love, that mutual love for one another should be the catalyst and that driving force to want to live holy. Because why? Jesus will never force himself on somebody. He is a gentleman. He will give you your free will. So it is your your mutual relationship with each other that you have grown that should want to drive you. He will never push you to do something, but you should have that intimate relationship and growth that you will want to do that. You will want to live holy out of your own free will. And if you're not there, there, I encourage you to continue in your journey with Christ because you, sir, no doubt will get there. Amen. Some key terms for baby believers that you may hear me talking about um, that may not make sense to you. <laughs> so I just went over the religious spirit, what that was. You may also hear me talking about um, things, referencing things like the enemy, the devourer, the angel of light. Simply put, angel of light, the devourer, and the enemy all refers to the devil. Yes, when I talk about that, that will refer to the devil. A fallen angel who led a group of worship angels um, in the heavenly realms, but he wanted all of the acclamation and wanted all of the reverence for himself. So he is a fallen angel. He um, took one third of the angels with him. So they have turned into dominions under under um, under the enemy. But if you ever hear me talking about the enemy, the devourer, or the angel of light, that is synonymous with the devil, folks. Um, the occult. Many of you, times you will you will listen to the preachings and you will hear me talk about the occult. What is the occult? The occult refers to the pra to practicing of witchcraft. For anything that has to deal with false gods, idols, idolatries, witches, warlocks, false doctrine, also known as Baal worship. False doctrine is also known as Baal. B-A-E-L worship. You can Google Baal worship and they'll lead you to scriptures in the Bible where it talks about Baal worship, the worshiping of other gods and false idols, how that is very unholy and it is called an abomination. Yes, it's called an abomination to God. Um, also, very common are New Age concepts about crystals and healing and yoga and meditation. Meditation in the Holy Spirit is very different from the New Age realm of crystals and meditation and yoga. That is very different from meditation in the Holy Spirit. Don't get the two confused. This New Age thing of crystals and healings and gems, it is the devil's way of perverting and it is the devil's way of trying to make something look pretty when it is not. And he will do it because he's called the angel of light. He comes in light to make things and mass things look good. It's not. The New Age uh, thing of yoga crystals and that type of meditation that's going to bring healing it is a mixture sometimes they'll even mix mixture it with religion and mixture it with religion and mix it with jesus christ and try to make the two become one jesus does not inhabit crystals jesus does not inhabit yoga the practice of yoga i'll get into later but it's actually if you it is actually worshiping a false god okay 
And there's no such thing as holy yoga, but I will get to that in another thing, okay? Witches, warlocks, yeah, that is all Baal worship. That is what we, if we give it a general term, you will often have me refer to it as the occult. But please be sure to know that this new thing of new age, crystals and healing, and some of even put about higher power or Jesus, or Jesus in there. No, Jesus doesn't need any help with crystals or anything. Jesus stands alone. Jesus is smart enough. Jesus is strong enough. The anointing through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is strong enough to stand on its own. Okay. Mm -mm. The throne room. If you ever hear me talking about the throne room, the throne room is a place in the heavenly realms where God the Father sits. There is a literal throne room in heaven. There's different, uh, it's the seat of God. There's act, The Lord actually has different throne rooms in heaven in different places. But if you hear me refer to the throne room, the throne room is where God the Father sits. The Holy Spirit sits on the left side and Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father. If you ever hear me about the throne room, it's, it's a seat in the heavenlies where, where God the Father sits. If you ever hear me talk about an advocate, the great intercessor, when I ever talk about the advocate or the great intercessor, please know that I'm talking about Jesus. The great advocate and the great intercessor, friends, I'm talking about Jesus. Once in a while, if you ever hear me talking about the advocate, the Bible does also talk about the advocate referring to the Holy Spirit. The Lord will pour out his spirit and send you an advocate. Um, also can mean the Holy Spirit. So if you ever hear me talking about the advocate or the great intercessor, sometimes I use them interchangeably between the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. The word, if you hear me reference the word, the word, simply put, refers to the Bible. Verses in the Bible. The word refers to verses in the Bible. Amen? The word refers to verses in the Bible. If you ever hear me reference things legal authority, like I say the enemy does not have legal authority over you, uh, there are courts in the heavens and our justice system on earth is actually modeled after a court system in heaven. I will teach on that later. But basically put, if, if I say, oh, the enemy has legal access to you, when you're a born again Christian... <clears throat> You're saved. You're saved. You go to heaven. The Lord will convict you every time you um, do something that isn't holy to bring about that rapid change and get you right back on the right path. Amen. But just because you're saved doesn't mean that you're off limits to the enemy. Okay? I'm sorry, but I have to tell you. Just because you're saved doesn't mean that you're off limits to the enemy. Some doctrine and some teachings out there within Christianity teach you that, oh, once I'm saved, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Yeah, that is true. That is absolutely 100% true. When you're living holy, when you're living holy and you are in good standing with the Lord, okay? When you are living holy and you are in good standing with the Lord. But that doesn't mean that the weapons will not form. Doesn't mean that the weapons will not form. Just means if the enemy was trying to take you out and kill you, you won't die. Because mm -mm, you're going to be saved by Jesus. He's going to save you. But it doesn't mean that the weapons are not going to form. It doesn't mean that, ye, it doesn't mean that um, you're still not going to be under attack. The enemy isn't happy that you came to Christ. Experience some, you be prepared to experience some warfare. But the legal authority refers to the enemy having the right to harass you. And some of you, even though you are saved, the enemy will still have the right to access you through a legal opening, a portal. When I talk about a portal or the legal authority or accessing you, what that means is before you became a believer, some of you struggled with pornography, premarital sex, gluttony, lust, stealing, lies. Um, these are just some common things that um, before coming to Christ that many struggle with and even after coming to Christ that many people struggle with. What happens though is those are things that are not of the Lord. Those are things that are demonic in nature. Okay, and what happens is when you access things like porn or you look at pornography, you engage in premarital sex, fornication, when you um, embrace the spirit of gluttony, when you have a spirit of lust, when you have a spirit of um, even a spirit of religion, or you have a spirit of lies and you're constantly telling lies, those are not holy things. So once you've done that, it's like, a, imagine a doorway. What you've done when you've accessed pornography, accessed um, premarital sex, when you have a spirit of lying and you're constantly telling lies and you don't know why you can't stop. Um, when you have a religious spirit and you're constantly, like, bullying people or just, like, just thinking that you have the right way and your way is right all the time. Um, that, that's unholy. That's not of the Lord. Those are, those are demonic spirits that rule over that. It's, imagine a doorway, Okay. When you shut yourself off to the pornography, the fornication, the spirit of lies, the spirit of religion, when you truly repent and choose to go and turn full circle, I'm not saying that you won't fall. 
You will fall. Things will happen. But again, the Lord isn't about condemnation. He's about conviction. There's a difference between condemnation and conviction. An enemy condemns, the Lord convicts. Convict is a little brief thing where you feel from the Lord. You're like, oh, I messed up. I got to repent. I got to get right back on the path. And the Lord is faithful to bring you about, wash you of your sins and get you on the right path so that you continue and try your very best. Try your very best through him. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. When you get your supernatural strength from him, that you won't continue to fall into that pattern. But it's like a doorway. When you continue to watch porn or engage in premarital sex or have a spirit of lies and stuff, you've opened that door. And the more you do it and are not delivered from it and have not given it up and have not asked the Lord to supernaturally deliver it from your ask for grace from that to get over whatever addiction or things that you have it's like a doorway you've allowed that demonic into your home and into your soul and into your spirit and what happens is, is you've allowed that legal opening the enemy now has a legal right to harass you and torment you because you've opened the door to that yeah you've opened the door so will you go to heaven yeah you'll go to heaven but there's st he still has that legal authority to hold that over your head and torment you. So you have to pray for supernatural grace to get over those addictions. And that's why this ministry also believes in deliverance. Because some things can't be delivered unless they're, they're done through fasting and prayer. Some things only come through deliverance through fasting and prayer. Or sometimes you really need to have your hands laid off of you. And I've, I've helped deliver people where I will see spirits come out of people. And they're like a new creation. The stuff is very much real. It's scary, but it's real. And it's out there. And sometimes things can only be delivered through fasting and prayer. But when you access that, it's like an open door. Even though you believe in Jesus now, your sins are washed away. But if you continue to access that while you're still a believer, you keep swinging that door open. The enemy is still going to come in. And you, many of you might be wondering, if I'm saved now, why is why do I still have these racing thoughts or me? Because the enemy still is claiming legal authority over you in the courts of heaven. He has legal authority because you've, you've willingly opened that door. So pray to close all portals over the demonic. Yes, pray to close all portals that have allowed the enemy to access you through things that you've done. And pray for supernatural grace, friends, to stop, be able to stop those addictions. And I will say a corporate prayer over you at the end. And I know this may be very confusing, but it is very much relevant and very much true. And as you continue to watch, you'll see how this will play out in many of your lives. Amen. So I'm very pleased to announce that the Lord has led me when I was preparing for this sermon here today to um, to uh, say a prayer of to lead believers. I mean, to lead people into um, into a sinner's prayer. This is not the typical sinner's prayer. This was something that when I was, the Holy Spirit was ministering to me, he gave a very specific prayer. I wrote it down in the journal and I'm very pleased to be the vessel today for anyone who hasn't surrendered to Christ or for anyone who wants to rededicate their life through a radical recommitment. I'm very pleased that the Lord has downloaded something for me for each of you. So I want to repeat, I want you to repeat after me if you uh, feel led to say this prayer to invite Jesus into your heart. Okay? Repeat after me. I come before you in total surrender. I now commit my ways to you and ask for forgiveness for the sins I committed when I turned away from you. I thank you for sifting me and thank you for the plan, purpose, and destiny you have over my life. I choose your will and ask that you show me how to die to my own natural fleshly will. I pray that you reveal revelation to me in your word. I pray you Open my eyes, unlock my ears to the supernatural. I pray and agree that you will grow me into a strong man or woman of God. Show me, Lord God, how to keep your will. Convict me quickly. When I fall away, so I may not stray away for long. Fill me with holy fire. Ignite a 
fire within me to learn and put my learning into good use forthwith. I claim Romans 8.28 over my life. And I confess that you, Jesus Christ, are my Lord and Savior. I choose not only to believe in you, but I choose to be discipled by you. And I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. So if you were led, I pray that you repeat it along or you may replay it later so you may repeat that sinner's prayer that the Holy Spirit put on my heart for the viewers. Um, a special um, thing is now, if you've committed your way to 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 Jesus Christ, um, you want your house, your house is your embassy, you are training to be an ambassador of Christ, and I'm so, so proud of you for taking the first step into, into commitment, into doing the Lord's will over your life. A little thing that I learned to commit my home, um, whether it be a bedroom, a full house, condo, apartment, mansion, whatever it is, uh, that help me kind of protect my home from any onslaught of the enemy is if you go online, you'll find things called anointing oil, anointing oil. Um, when I run out of anointing oil, I can't buy it online or I can't go to one of the Christian bookstores and buy anointing oil. I simply use olive oil, olive oil, and I will, I'll put it on my finger and I'll put it over my doorpost in the sign of a cross and my house, I put it over my TV because all these are portals where the enemy will tempt us and access us. Through our TV, through our laptops, through our homes, he'll try to infiltrate us and send temptations to deter, to deter us from the, Lord's, from the Lord's will. And when you put over the anointing oil over your doorposts, over your bedposts, over your laptops, over your computer, um, I've been in deep warfare sometimes where the enemy has attacked my car that I've had to get the anointing oil or olive oil and put it at the rear guard and the front guard of my home to, uh, of my, um, my transportation to protect from the enemy's onslaught. Um, if you don't feel like to do this, you don't have to, but it is something that I've embraced and I've noticed a difference. It does help. It very much is biblical. It does come um, not from the New Testament, but from the Old Testament. It is um, correlates with the Passover of the Jews when um, the Pharaoh wanted to eradicate the Hebrew babies. The Lord gave... Um, the Lord gave the idea for the Hebrews to put the blood of the lamb, yes, the blood of the lamb, over their doorposts. And what would happen is the spirit of death, when the spirit of death would come to take their babies and eradicate the Hebrew babies in genocide, when you had that blood of the lamb in this, over your doorpost, the spirit of death knew that it could not touch. It could not touch that home. It could not touch that hope. So that's where that concept is from. And the anointing oil is symbolic of the, um, the anointing oil is symbolic of the anointing that comes with the Holy Spirit and comes with Jesus. So it, it, it dates back to the concept of Passover, but uh, we don't actually use blood. We use anointing oil or olive oil, and you can put that over your bedpost um, to secure just a nice tender sleep. Um, put that over places where the enemy can have access to your TVs, your laptops, because media is not foolproof. He will try to tempt you and infiltrate you through media. Mm -mm -mm, nopey, nopey, nopey. Got to secure that portal. Got to secure that opening. He will try to wreak havoc on your car any way that he can, because maybe you were supposed to go minister. Maybe you have a divine appointment. He'll try to wreak havoc. So you put the anointing oil over your vessel. Yep. Put it over. Yep. If you ride a scooter, ride a bike, um, have any other mode of transportation, might I suggest putting a little anointing or olive oil on your tires or whatever to keep you safe. Mm -hmm, in Jesus' name. Put that over your doorposts in your, in your bedroom, over the doorpost that leads to the outside of your home. Mm -hmm, dates back to the concept of Passover. Um, I also encourage each of you that are new to Christ to do a um, communion every day. Um, it renews the covenant uh, between you and the Lord. Um, and I encourage each of you, the next step is to find a church that you could get plugged into um, that will supplement, um, that this could be a supplement to, and um, get water baptized. The next step after saying, saying the sinner's prayer is to make a, a commitment in public through water baptism. So I encourage each and every one of you to do that. Water baptism is so wonderful. Even me, I, I get water baptized again. I've, 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 it just like renews the covenant. There's something so refreshing about it. 
It's just so beautiful. So I encourage each and every one of you to find a place where you can get water baptized after you've said this prayer. I pray that this blessed you. Go about your day in peace, everybody. Um, welcome to Affirm Family Ministries. Again, I'm Prophetess Natalie J. Guerra. I was so happy to uh, minister this word of, over you. I pray that each of you go in peace. May you be blessed and safe as the week uh, heads into the new week as we end the last week of March and head into April and get closer to Resurrection Day. Amen. In Jesus' name, multiple and divine blessings over each and every one of you. God bless you. Amen.